Hi guys, it's me Karen and I've come to do one more picture. <laughs> I did finish my other one, so I'm going to go ahead and do the second page in The Magical Dawn by Hannah Carlson that I had asked you guys if you wanted me to do. And you did get a lot of votes on this one, so I'm going to go ahead and do this one too. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the background with the metallic matte black paint. It's folk art paint. So that's what it looks like. And um, I just use it to paint here. So I've got a little plate this time because my desk is just a tiny bit cluttered. So I just kind of open it up. Anything that's dried on there gets thrown away. And I will put a blob, if I can get a blob out, <laughs> down on the paper. And you probably need two of those. And because, um, if you notice how thick this paint is, I just spray it down with some water. And then I have just my little paintbrush here. Any paintbrush will do. And I'll take some of that water and some of this really thick stuff here and mix it together. I don't want it too wet, but I also don't want it so thick I can't uh, you know, paint with it. I don't want to put plaster down on the paper. <laughs> Sometimes that's what it feels like when it's that thick. Okay, so, like I said, it's not um, too thick. I'm going to start over on this side of the page. I'll put another paper behind there, too, just because I'm not the... It's not going to bleed through. I'm just not the neatest person when it comes to painting, and I don't want to paint the page behind. So see how it's nice and thick but it's thin enough where it has movement which is what i'm after so it'll cover in one coat and you'll see it kind of curls the page a little bit but that's okay with me i'm gonna get you down a little closer here so you just play with this until you get it the right consistency the thicker the paint is it's less coverage but it's also um, harder to move in the tight spaces. Okay, and then we're just going to take this down into the areas here. And paint through here. Now if I goof a little and go too close or something, <laughs> I'm not going to fret over it. When I color, because I'm using the matte paint, when I color um, with my Prismacolors, it will actually color on top of the black paint. So if I, say, go into the um, petal area, I can always fix that. That's what I mean by too thick. So this is kind of tedious and it's kind of up close. I always get questions, how come I don't let you sit here for an hour and a half watching me paint? <laughs> this process takes a long time. And I don't think you really want to sit and watch that. I 
I mean, you might. I don't know. <laughs> I'll do a bit of it. There's a very uh, fine tip on this paint brush so I can get into the tiny corners. And when you, sorry about sniffing. I think that was a petal. It'll go nicely around edges. It's a watercolor brush. Tiny, tiny little spots. It's one of my favorite brushes. I have, uh, I do cards. Um, birthday cards, Christmas cards, thank you cards, blah blah blah, <laughs> cards. And I will do watercolor on some of them. And I bought this so I could do watercolor on the flowers on some of my cards. And just fell in love with this. I, this is the only brush I have from this company. <laughs> it's the perfect size for what I need. So when you find something that works, you use it. Okay, let me go around this and the rope or I'm gonna go back in and put my own dots in so I don't mind painting over those at all. If you hold the, like I said, it is going to warp a little bit. If you hold your paper down a little bit, it will dry flat. That's why my fingers are doing what they're doing. I have to go up. And then the healthy part. If you're wondering why I use this to do the big spots, it's because I've dirtied one brush. <laughs> I want all the brush strokes to look semi-consistent. You don't see it in the pictures, but you see it when you look at it. So I'll do in between these two houses, and then I think I will go ahead... and do the rest of this off camera. Like I said, if I go over a line, it's not gonna bother me because I can just color that spot back in. Some of these I wanna take my time around. But Especially those little petals down here. So I'll be using this black mat on the outside here, but I will be doing some distressed ink on the inside in here. So we'll be doing a lot of different mediums on this one. Of course there will be the stickles and the pop of gel pens <laughs> and I'm coloring of course in the prism of pencils.
Anyway, so there you go. That's the gist of doing that. I'm just going to finish with the rest of the page. And like I said, I'm going to go over all these little dots and then just go up to the rope and into these little flower areas. And then I will be back. Okay, most of it is painted, but I was going to show you how I get down into the um, corner down here. So it's just, uh, or no matter how good you paint, there's always going to be a little dry spot because the paint dries a little um, tighter than the paper. That's why it wrinkles. So sometimes you'll have little spots. I'll go through those <laughs> over again. But I want to get as close down here. So I just take the brush and very carefully try to keep it a consistent line. I don't want to get all the way down there, but I do want it to look like it's close. So I just take my time on that. And I'll hold the um, book open with my fingers. And just let the brush do all the work. Push it down and bring it up. Then I'll kind of just kind of hold it a little bit. I'm going to come down into this side. I can't see, <laughs> and you probably can't either. So we'll just come down here and run the brush up. And then connect to the line. Now, if I did get some on the other side of the page, that just means an awful lot of work for me to paint the black background on that page. <laughs> but I can be done. All right. So, there we have it. All done in black. And then, like I said, if there's any spots that aren't covered, I will just go over them. And I can go over them at any time. It's not like I don't have the thing of paint sitting right there. <laughs> so that's good enough for me right now. And then I will uh, go wash my brush and I'll be back. Okay, we're going to do the um, blue on the inside. So I'm going to do that with Distress Ink. And it's going to be... Ah. Salty Ocean is what I'm going to use, and I'm going to use the little tool, and like I've uh, said before, I only ink up one portion of this pad, so and I ink um, down like this, so I'm just using that s section. Sometimes I will use the whole thing to blend it, but I only ink up one side, and I will run it down on the edge. So, I have to turn the book a little bit so I can get around the corner. Start up here. And we're just going to go right underneath this uh, ropey thing very gently and bring blue in. If it goes on the ropey thing, that's okay because I can use that as a highlight. And then we're just going to bring it down a little. Don't want to get on the roof, so I'll use that as a barrier and the ropey thing. Just very lightly and then pulling it down a little. If it gets into the leaves, that's okay too. Because blue and yellow make a beautiful green. <laughs> and the 
seems to look kind of uh, blotchy, which is fine with me too. Just keep going over it until it's blended. And there's some of that over here in the flowers. Try to get some in there. And like I said, if it gets on the flower, that's okay. I can make that a blue flower. Gets on the leaves, add a little yellow, it'll make it green. So it's no big deal. Just gonna bring it down. I'm not putting any more ink on the tool itself. I'm just using what's there. And then I'll lighten it up. And I'll blend it. And you just get it to where you like the look of it. Now, I have a pencil that goes really well with this salty ocean. So if there's any areas that I think need to be darker, I just go in with the non-photo blue, which is 919, and I'll go around the edges. And see, it's a pretty good match. So I can darken this areas up that I didn't get covered terribly well with the ink, or in any places I want a darker shadow like in the flower area. There's a little spot right there. And then if I really want to um, get it even darker, I'll go in with some indigo blue underneath this area here. I'll just work that around. And it's just a light pressure on this, so it'll blend with the ink better. And like I said, if you want it even darker, kind of using the same colors that I had out on my desk yesterday. Use the indigo um, blue, which is 901, and just kind of tuck it in underneath this area here, and then bring it down a little bit. Before I go too crazy on putting down all the pencil, if I want to do any effects with the Distress ink, now would be the time to do it. Because once I put a wax layer over it, that seals any um, reactivity to water that the ink has. And what I like is putting a little bit of water on here and using a cloth and bringing it up and changing the look of the Distress ink. So before I put too much of the pencil down, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I also want to protect the black paint because it's acrylic and acrylic and water will uh, react too. This is just a Distress sprayer from uh, Tim Holtz, Ranger product. And instead of giving you a fine mist of water, it has something in the little nozzle here 
that uh, sprays out big chunks and little chunks of water. So I'm just going to um, hold it far away and spray and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then just dry that up. And where it is hit, you see the difference that it does. It's really cool. I like. And then I'm gonna put a little more here, get a little more up there. And here, a little bit there. And that gives me that really cool look. So I want to get that nice and dry. And then I've got this, I'm not sure if you can really see that, but look how cool that looks. And the longer it dries, the more color you'll see around the edges. So we'll go ahead now and just go in with the indigo blue, because that's the effect I wanted to get on the light blue, and we'll just darken underneath this area. And since I've already done my watering on it, doesn't matter how much pencil I put down now, it'll stay there. And then we'll just darken up just the top corner here and let the rest of it be nice and light, giving our little houses a sky scene, quick and easy. Cool. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let that dry for a little bit and then I'll be back in a second. Okay, we're going to um, color the uh, building parts and I'm going to do them kind of in gray tones. So I have warm gray 70 percent, 1056, warm gray 20 percent which is 1051 and warm gray 50 percent 1054. So they will actually be used in the 70, 50 and then, then 20. And I might even get a lighter, but I don't think I need it. So I'm just going to start with the 70% and go around the edges. And the shadowy areas. I'm just assuming that the building goes down under here. <laughs> And I just kind of lightly bring it in. And darkening it at the edges and underneath the eaves. And then like under all these eaves and then on the side to dark and then bring it into light. And I'm going to bring it in just a bit more here, very lightly underneath the windows. But give them a little shadow too. Okay. And we're going to do that on all the um, buildings here.
I'm making a darker pressure in, or darker pressure while I'm at the corners here and right underneath the window. Just to darken that up. The other colors will blend into that and bring over the shadow. Of these dark Don't worry too much about these little circles up here, and I can darken these with um, a gel pen, probably. Okay. Okay, then I'm going to get down uh, here. Now I have to decide in here <laughs> what to do. If I keep the building coming down, there's no windows and the doors would probably be up here. So, boy, I'll have to decide on that later. There is some <laughs> space down there I'm not sure what to do with. Probably just do it green. to figure that out. That was fun. Never really colored houses before. I have a whole book I've got to practice, so that's why I picked this picture. It's got that little town Christmas. It's got snow and everything, so it'll be fun to do. I just wonder what time I'm going to have to do it. But heck, I can probably figure it out. At least get one done.
Okay. And we probably should do these little houses too. Put a little shading here. Just the light shading, and we will do the house. I think those house in a different color because they look more like wood. And I have this house here to do. Almost forgot a house. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to switch to the 50% um, and we're going to go in and just bring that in a little bit more. Going over what we colored. I'm just slightly bringing it in. Sorry, <laughs> I'm just coloring. I want to go darker under here when I bring in the lights so you have a little shadow. I'm just trying to get a little shadow under there. Oops, got the window a little bit there, that's okay. Now I'm going to go in with the uh, 20, which is the lightest color. 
and just bring it in toward the center. And I'm just kind of blending all those grays together. Have our first little gray house. And we're just gonna do that on all of them. Making sure all those grays are blended. Tiny little house here. So I'm kind of using a medium to light pressure. The medium pressure around the darkest areas just to make sure they're blended and then lighter when I get towards the center. So I'll work on that just a little bit. Make sure they're blended in. Doesn't look too bad. And then I need to get out some pencils to do the uh, roofs. So I'll be back in a second. I am going to add a little black in between here just to highlight the. Uh, lines up again so you know where one building is just sometimes those lines I color over too much and I just like to add them back in so um these areas. I just go around with the black pencil. And add them back in. And if there's any extra shading, I can put it in at that time too.
And I know I went out of the line there and that's all right with me. I will fix that later. I'd go around all the windows, but I think I'm going to be coloring those with a different color, so... I don't want to make them too black. All right, we're going to do other roofs in um, pinks, purples, and blues, since that's what I have out on my desk. And I'm just going to use the same colors that I did on my other picture. I like that combination. So we will find the pink colors, which is the um, rosies. Let's see, I have one of them on this side of my desk. Okay, so um, I'm just going to be using uh, two different tones in the roofs. So it's the um, Black Raspberry 1095 and the Clay Rose, which is 1017 on one roof. So we will pick a roof here, and I think I kind of like the um, round one. So we're going to go on this side. This is the black raspberry, and we'll bring it in. Then we'll take it in on this side. And this side, we'll just skip every other one and go up. Kind of bring this in a little. Oh, it gets tiny, tiny up here. <laughs> Bring that out a little further here. Almost across the bottom. On that side. Then we will bring in the clay rose. Bring those over. Yeah, this looks. Then we'll bring in a little pink rose and lighten it up on this side. That'll look okay. Go back in with the raspberry and just kind of draw it into the other colors.
blend them a little better. And some of that dark on this side too. <laughs> kind of a cool look. Don't know if I'll do that on all the roofs. <laughs> Okay, this roof here we're going to do in blues, and I'm going to start at the tip top up here, and just add in the indigo, which is 901, and then bring it down through here, dark up here, and then lighten the pressure coming down. Then dark on the tip here and lighten the pressure going up. Really, no rhyme or reason how I'm coloring these things. <laughs> Just having fun. This is the uh, sky blue light, and I'm just going to blend that in with the indigo. And then bring it up. And same on the tip top up here. Then I'm going to do the opposite on the center part here. Dark here. Mm -mm. I'm just going to darken this too. And we'll bring the light blue up there and bring that color down. And we'll take some of this indigo on the sides and bring it in. And pull it in. There we go. So now well, we have a pink roof and a blue roof. I'm going to do this one in purple. So I'll probably do, do these in purple, but I guess these will have to be done in pink. Which is fine. So the purple is black grape 996 and the um, gray lavender, which is 1026. And on this roof, this tall one here, I'm just going to go up on the one side with the big pressure. It's going to get a little darker up here lighter towards the center just like we did with the gray cover up that little blue blob that i had gotten in the roof and the same on this side leave that a little lighter on the top so it doesn't get too muddy in the black bottom. Then we're just going to take the gray lavender and blend it in and bring it out towards the center.
something that we need anymore. The dark will just go in here and darken it up. Kind of drag it through here. Make that line look a little less jagged. darken some spots wear and tear on the roof <laughs> okay so we have a purple a pink and a blue and I'm gonna go ahead and do oh I might do these in green because I have green leaves going down here awesome going to do this one in the purple it'll be pretty so we're gonna go dark. These look like little hearts almost. I'll do it on this side too, just a little bit. And then we'll put in the gray. Just kind of pulling that color down. Doing the same on this side, pulling the color in here. I'll leave the center a little wider this time, and we'll come in with a. Um, I have a Scholar Prismacolor White, and it's three three eight. And it's a little harder than the other wax pencils, so it actually helps blend and adds a little whiteness. So we're going to add that in there. And anywhere I think a little lighter color would be a good idea. And we can add it up here too. And I'm going to put a little um, Posca on these also in the areas I think that they need it. It's just going to go up the roof. Okay. So, two purple, pinkish, blah, 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 blah. All right. <laughs> and we got to figure out um, the other two roofs and I got to get pencils so okay this one I'm gonna do in green so I got out my greens which were basically sitting on my desk <laughs> so I'm doing it in uh, moss green 1097 espresso 1099 and lime peel 1005 starting off with the espresso in the dark spots so I'm gonna go underneath all these little guys kind of bringing it down in the center kind of a dark um, or heavy pressure right in the crevice of these and then a light pressure coming out 
doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to be blending it with the other colors. And espresso is the shadow part. After I get these um, roofs done, it'll have to be the end of part one of this video. And then we'll have to do the leaves and the uh, flowers in part two. It's just getting a little long here. So this is the uh, moss green and we just blend it into the espresso and bring it down into the um, tile. Sorry about the noise outside. It's garbage day, and that's the garbage truck making all that noise. So we'll just get that moss green on there. <laughs> I just had a thought, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been giggling in my own head. Let's do a live in a place called Edmonds and it was down closer to the uh, water and we had a lot of pine trees and we spent a lot of time up on that roof trying to get rid of moss and here I am <laughs> putting the moss green on the on the roof. Doesn't take much to amuse me I guess. <laughs> okay moss green on that and then the lightest part will be the lime peel and we'll just do the same thing on the other roof over there the lime peel is a light green Just kind of blending it all together. Probably be the brightest color on the page. Besides white. Oop, we didn't shadow that one. I am slacking. <laughs> Left a tile unshaded. Uh, there we go. And we will do the other one real quick too. Just done the exact same way. We have a chimney on this one, we'll even the same color. Moss green. Okay. 
and then lime peel. And there we have the green leaf riffs done. Some of the leaves will be done in the same color, so I'll do one leaf before we end this video and show you how I'm going to do them. So we'll pick one of these big leaves here. So we'll add the this is espresso. that at the bottom and at the top and down the side a little bit up the vein but we want some of that to go in a different color too and then we go with the moss green in any areas I'll just go back in with the espresso and darken them up a little bit just like that so the leaves will be done in that color not all the exact same way but semi close to that Okay, well that'll be the end of part one and I will see you in part two. Hope you're enjoying the video. Give you a better look at the buildings here. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe. If you would like notifications, ring the little bell. And I hope to see you in part two. Have a great day everybody. Bye now.